Hey, what's up? So recently I bought a 2007 GMC Envoy. You guys may be familiar with Ruby Red. One of the problems that Ruby Red had from day one was every time I started up the truck, it would get this service tire monitor message. This video is not meant to tell you how to fix this message or disable it. This is going to tell you about what it means and what you can do to do your at-home diagnosis. You'll notice on Ruby Red in the instrument cluster it says service tire monitor. Pretty obvious, right? You'll notice that by using uh, the buttons on the steering wheel, you're able to go down here and actually read tire pressures. Now the other version of the cluster that's in the Trailblazers and Envoys does not have that little message center, what they call the driver's information center. Now even though Ruby Red does have the driver's information center, well, not all of them had that. Me showing this part isn't going to benefit the people that don't have driver's information. So I'm going to show it both ways. You don't necessarily need to rely on the driver's information center to tell you is it a low tire problem or is it a service tire monitor problem. Believe it or not, they're two different things. See, the behavior of the low tire pressure warning light can also tell you if it's a service tire monitor request or if it's a check tire pressure request. So you might pull out the owner's manual, skim through it, page 444, gives a description of how the tire pressure monitoring system works. They don't make any mention of service tire monitor, except for one little footnote here on 447, which says if you put the spare on, you may get the service tire monitor message. Other than that, makes no mention of it. Way to go. Okay, factory service manual, volume 3, page 16-105. We have a mention here of... The liftgate module has the ability to detect malfunctions within the TPM system. Any malfunction detected will cause the DIC, Driver's Information Center, to display the service tire monitor message. For more information, you can read through this crap, but we're not going to do that. So here we have a crude drawing of how all this crap works. This is the instrument cluster. This is where you'll find the low tire light. And if equipped, the Driver's Information Center message. Inside the liftgate itself, you'll find the liftgate module. The liftgate module communicates to the cluster. Now I've talked about the liftgate module years ago when we were talking about the Trailblazer power door locks. For the later Trailblazers like Ruby Red, it also incorporates tire pressure monitoring. Each of the four wheels, spare not included, has a little tire pressure sensor inside. Those sensors can be read by the liftgate module to tell the tire pressure. Statistically, the service tire monitor message will come on when one or more of the sensors are not sending a signal to the liftgate module. So what it's saying is if the liftgate module detects a malfunction, it sets a code. And in order to read that code, you really have to scan the liftgate module with a scan tool. Now, being able to scan the liftgate module for codes is not do-it-yourself. I, however, do this shit for a living, so I have my choice of scan tools. So I'm actually just going to scan the liftgate module in Ruby Red and see what's happening. So I can go for the Tech 2. But if I use that, then I'm being an elitist. I could go for my modus, but uh, you too slow. I can go with this guy. I like this guy. So we got a CO760 left rear tire pressure sensor fault. So you're a do-it-yourselfer, you just bought a truck like Ruby Red, it's got the service tire monitor message, you don't have access to a fancy scan tool, the dealer wants 150 bucks just to look at it and tell you what's wrong, what do you do? You can determine if you have a bad sensor yourself just by following this relearn procedure that's in the owner's manual. If you don't have your owner's manual, well maybe somebody will take the information here and here and put it on YouTube so you can just follow it yourself. Putting the tire pressure monitoring system into the relearn mode is going to force the liftgate module to read each of the sensors, actually in that order that I just did. Left front, right front, right rear, left rear. Doing it in this specific order 
really only applies if you have driver's information center since it can tell you the individual tire pressures at each corner. Without driver's information center, which sensors which doesn't really matter. Let's just say you do left front, right front, and right rear doesn't read. Well, after five minutes, that whole thing is just going to time out. Well, then try it again. Back out of it, try it again. Start with this one to see if this one works. What you wouldn't want to happen is you got to right rear and it doesn't work. So you go and you get the right rear sensor replaced. You go back into your programming. Yes, yes, yes. But come to find out that this one doesn't work. That can like take your aggravation factor like way up there somewhere. So don't commit yourself to this order if you're doing a diagnostic only. Well, today we're going to talk about this service tire monitor message. You might also notice the tire light flashing up there. Now using the driver's information center buttons, you can get right here to tire pressures. Left rear tire, dash, dash, dash. So we got a CO760, left rear tire pressure sensor fault. It's kind of matched what we had up in the dash when we checked tire pressures. Usually what I do is I write all these tire pressure IDs down and then go around and probe them with the tool we have at work. Are you camera shy? No. Just pretend the camera's not there. What do you have there, man? Tire pressure sensor. Yes, a tire pressure sensor. And what kind of stem does it have on it? Is that rubber? Yes. Yeah, it's rubber. So as you saw, when I did the tire pressure sensor test on Ruby Red, the sensors that read had metal stems, and the one that didn't read had a rubber stem. Don't let the rubber stem fool you. It could definitely have a sensor on the end of it. You know what I'm saying? It should be obvious that if you have the tire light come on, the first thing you should do is just make sure you got enough juice in the tires. And by juice, I mean air. And by air, I mean just check the fucking tires. You don't need a fancy gauge like I got. One of these little poppers will do the same thing. The fancy gauge said 31. This is like 31 and a half, something like that. Alright, there's a fly in here, and he's driving me nuts. So if you hear me go crazy, that's why. It's because of the fucking fly. Now, some of you guys might remember a while back I did a video upgraded to a stainless steel hose on my DT4 which is really what I use for doing tire pressure monitoring systems but this thing is, it works just as good provided that it's accurate when in doubt of its accuracy you can always get another one and just compare it but you don't need the Mako DT4 you can get this one from Astro for about half the price Do you guys see any similarities between the two they're the same fucking thing. This one's half the price. For a do-it-yourself, or is this even worth getting? No, this one works just as good. I do this for a living. I need reliable shit. 60 bucks. I kind of need it. I just wanted to throw that out there that these are the same thing with significantly different price tags on them. And as you saw, I mean, for what it was worth, this and this were like right on par with each other. But again, for you guys, this will work just as good. You fucking fly. You wait. Just fucking wait. That fly drove me so crazy that I totally forgot to show the budget version of the tire inflator. This piece right here was something I picked up from Harbor Freight. If I remember right, it was only like six bucks. When you put this part on the tire stem, 
this little plunger piece will actually pop out and tell you roughly how much air is in the tires. And while it works great as a tire inflator, the gauge here, it doesn't really do a good job telling you what's actually in the tire. A guy at my work bought the other variant of this at Harbor Freight, the one that has like the little circle gauge on it with the needle, and that thing is not very accurate at all either. So as an inflator by itself, you really can't go wrong with this one. The problem with recommending something like this, or even my one from Astro, is that just kind of assumes that everybody out there has access to an air compressor to fill up their tires in their driveway. Well, a lot of you guys don't have access to an air compressor. You guys live in an apartment. You guys might have a garage that the wife has taken over to fill up with her stupid Sensi pyramid scheme crap. Not everyone is going to have the means to be able to do this. So I'm just going to throw this up there for the people that might have access to their own compressor at home and have the capabilities to fill up their tires. If someone did not have the means to fill up the tires and the convenience of their own house, you can actually take your car to like the gas station that has the air pump and do your TPMS relearn right out there in the parking lot. I'm sure they're not going to say anything. And if they do, well, just punch them right in their fucking face. You got business to take care of, you know? I've been trying to spray it with this. Where you at? I hear you. Fucking asshole. Inside a lot of those TPMS sensors, for whatever reason, the metal of the metal stem and the metal of the metal core are dissimilar metals. What does that mean? Well, over time they can really get fucked up. The safest way to really deflate one of those things is to use something like this. This thing will actually thread onto the valve stem and politely let air out of the tire without fucking anything up. The cool thing about this is that you can put the TPMS system into learning mode and you can screw this on and slowly let out air and you kind of don't have to sit there holding the gauge on it letting air out of the tire until the truck recognizes that the tire pressure has changed and that that sensor works uh, I guess if I was a do-it-yourselfer I probably wouldn't get this I wouldn't get it because on the other end of this it has this little nubby thing here and you can use that to just hold it there on the stem and let air out that way I have the luxury of all the fancy tools at my work I bought one of these things off of Amazon. The shit was like 10 bucks. I'm gonna give it a try to see if it works. Sensor in, driver side rear. Is that it? Oh shit. Son of a bitch. This is probably the best 10 bucks I've ever spent. Well, maybe not. One time I got a stack of porno movies for 10 bucks on eBay. Actually pretty good. I'm gonna go out on a tangent here and say, somebody's probably done a video on this on YouTube, but I don't give a fuck about what they're doing. I got the tire laid out on Ruby Red. I just had to read the fucking manual. You guys would be just surprised if you knew how many times somebody would come to my work and say, hey, can you put air in my tires? And then we put the air in the tires, and then they come right back in and say, hey, it still says service tire monitor. The service tire monitor message is not saying that your tires need air. It's saying that there's a problem with the monitoring system. This is just another system where people try to diagnose this stuff themselves, even though they have no idea what they're working on or what they're talking about. People come back into my work all pissed off because the message didn't go out. Like, we put the air in the tires the wrong way or something, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can understand from a customer's perspective, they might not notice the difference between the tire light flashing and the tire light being solid. But when it specifically says service tire monitor, it's not saying check the air in your tires, stupid. It's saying service the tire monitor system. The reason for me showing the do-it-yourself and the not-do-it-yourself versions for this is so that people have a better understanding that 
Specialized equipment goes into diagnosing these service tire monitor faults. Do you really expect someone to pull out their scan tool and, and scan your liftgate module, retrieve codes, and you know determine the problem for free? I don't fucking think so. Sorry, but if customers don't want to pay for a diagnosis, they're just going to get a guess. It needs all four sensors and a relearn. Probably be 500 bucks. Now with Ruby Red, I only did the left rear tire sensor, and there's a reason why. Unless you're blind, you probably noticed that Ruby Red's wheels are in terrible condition. I will be replacing the wheels in Ruby Red, so it doesn't really make sense to put all new sensors in Ruby Red. The purpose of this video is just to explain how this shit works and how you can diagnose it yourself. This is not going to tell you how to replace a tire sensor. In my opinion, replacing tire sensors is not do-it-yourself. Sure, there's videos out there that'll show you guys how to break beads down, and if you can get the outer bead broken, well, chances are you can figure out how to remove and install a tire pressure sensor. The problem with doing that is, is that a lot of times corrosion builds up between the wheel and where the tire meets the wheel. Once you break that bond of corrosion, good luck getting it to seal back up. Yeah, the tire might physically seal to the wheel, but chances are you're going to have nothing but tire leak problems. In cases where corrosion is present between the wheel and the tire, a lot of times the tire has to be completely removed from the wheel. You've got to sand down all the corrosion, put bead sealer on it. It's a lot of work if you have access to the right tire equipment like I do at my work. I couldn't imagine trying to do that shit at home in the driveway. So while I don't show you how to replace the tire sensor, which is the fix, at least in Ruby Red's case, I think that you guys are going to benefit from learning what the service tire monitor message means, and most importantly, like how you can kind of diagnose it yourself. I think that's what makes this shit valuable. So there you have it, Trailblazer non-voice service tire monitor message. What does it mean? How does it work? What does it do? Can we diagnose it ourselves? I think we showed all that shit. I think we're covered. We said what we needed to say. You know what I'm saying? Pretty cool. Actually, no, it was pretty boring to be honest with you, but so many people come to my work thinking that putting air in tires is going to fix a service tire monitor message. So many customers of mine that I, I explain it to them that it's not about the pressure in the tires, it's about the monitoring system itself. They still don't get it. Well, here's a video. Here's how it works. Based on the owner's manual, the factory shop manual, and my real world experience. Anyway, a lot more Ruby Red stuff is to come. Some things are not being shown that I'm doing behind the scenes. Uh, with Ruby Red, I've done the throttle body clean, transfer case service, they could put a wheel bearing on it, ball joints, put plugs in it. There's no real reason for me to show any of that stuff again. It seems to be a trend with automotive channels on YouTube just to do the same thing on the same car. There's not much difference between doing plugs in my 03 Trailblazer or my 07 Envoy. Except the fact that the 07 Envoy had a lot more room for getting number 5 and number 6 plugs out. I thought it was kind of weird. I know they redesigned the valve covers a little bit. Whatever they did made it a, a breeze. So I'm definitely glad that I did the 03 Trailblazer where it's really, really tough to get to as opposed to just doing Ruby Red first. Maybe that's why some people were saying that replacing the plugs were easy. Anyway, if you like this, you have a Trailblazer and Envoy, definitely subscribe. If you don't like it, go eat dirt. Don't really give a fuck if I talk too much or I didn't show something or you would have done something different. Uh, definitely send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I will send you a handwritten apology. So thanks for watching and um, more Ruby Red awesomeness to come. God damn. 23 fucking minutes. Who do you watch on YouTube? FGTV and Kylie Keen. FGTV and who else? Kylie Keen. Who's that? He's a guy that plays video games. Plays video games? Does he play Bendy and the Butt Wipe Machine? Guess what? He has a car. Um, a real car or a pretend car? A real car. He has a, he has a little pad in it. You play fucking games on it. You can play fucking games in his car? Oh, yeah. You we can. watched the porno movie in Ruby Red. Well, you weren't there. So you want to show it to them? Well, yeah, you just hold it up like this. No, I bet the, I bet the TV in the car. Well, no, because the only movie I have on DVD right now is an adult film. Oh, also, just so everybody knows, my buddy 
has a poop emoji. Where's it at? He has a poop emoji. When I was out filming Ruby Red before you got here, I farted on this uh, tire pressure tool. It was loud too. It was like brrrr. It was pretty cool. It's not a game. It's just for programming tire sensors and testing stuff out. Uh -huh. Oh! But how you get off? Uh, press and hold the red button. Keep holding it. There you go. Hey, what up? 2013 Sonata. Nothing fancy here. Just a typical Sonata. Well, this is turbo, but either way, it still sucks. Just out on a road test, but not just any road test. I'm fired up. Why am I fired up? Well, I'm not really fired up, like fired up. Even though I had to buy these monstrosity 24 ounce monsters this morning because they were out of the regular shit, whatever. There's a lot of stuff motherfuckers can say about me. Really, I don't care. Yes, I'm old. Yes, my hair's gone. Yes, I'm overweight. None of that shit matters. I, y'all motherfuckers can say whatever you want. But don't you ever say that I give you motherfuckers the wrong information, you know what I'm saying? As far as this disabling airbag thing, you see you got people that don't do this that are gonna say, hey, you know, don't listen to this guy because the only way to safely work on the airbag is to disconnect the battery. That's actually wrong. I didn't make anything up. What I told you guys about the two ways to disable the airbags was right from the manufacturer. They're the ones that say there's actually two ways to do it. Believe it or not, I didn't know about the second way, the fuse pull. There are instances where they don't want you to disconnect the battery, but they want you to be able to service the airbag system for, for various reasons. But like I said in that video, it's undisputed that disconnecting the battery and then waiting for the shit to time out is the preferred and the safest way to do it. But there may be a case where you can't or don't want to disconnect the battery, just like I don't want to disconnect the battery in my 2003. What I'm getting at here, when it's all said and done, I'm not going to make something up. You know what I mean? I'm not going to mislead you guys. Particularly when it comes to something like airbags, which I'm not exaggerating that they do scare the fuck out of me. I've seen them blow up in person, you know what I'm saying? That is some serious fucking, that, that serious potential right there. Serious fucking energy right there, you know what I'm saying? I want that motherfucker blowing up in my face. I mean, it'll rip your face right off. They scare me, they make me nervous, I don't like doing it. Um, it is what it is though, sometimes in this profession you like gotta do stuff you don't wanna do, whatever. It's okay to question things, you know what I'm saying? It would be one thing if somebody said, Mayo 3, I've never heard of uh, disabling an airbag system by pulling the fuse out. Can you elaborate on the shit? Something along those lines. You know, not some dumb shit like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because my dad used to be a mechanic and he said the only way to do it is to disconnect the battery. Well, your dad's wrong, he needs to give it the fucking times and tell your dad to learn how to read and then read the fucking shop manual cover to cover, you know what I'm saying? Then he'd be a little bit more informed about this particular vehicle and the ways you can disable airbags. See, it's easy to sit back and be an anonymous fucking nobody piece of shit just sitting back saying, nope, that's wrong, nope, that's wrong. There's a fancy word for people like that, for people like you. You know what I mean? There's a fancy word for it. Just the negative Nancy fucking, that sucks, this sucks, her pussy's too tight, just constant nagging, complaining, fucking assholes out there. I don't know what the fancy word is because I don't use it in casual conversation on a daily basis. But there's a word for that. And you are that word, you know what I'm saying? I wish I had a thesaurus on me or some shit where I could look up that word for people not a thesaurus, I guess a dictionary is the book you really need. There you go, you can nitpick that too. Um, for people that are just constantly crying and nagging and complaining, what y'all motherfuckers need to do is go out, cop some cookies, smoke that shit, and uh, man, just enjoy your life, man. Quit being a miserable sack of shit, you know what I mean? I just can't believe the fucking nerve of some people. That it's just, nope, that guy's wrong. And you look, it's like, who is this? This guy's a nobody, you know what I mean? Uh.